or my friend Steven, who's even worse than I am, but more quiet and gentle. <laughs> so our next bid is for the year 2020, and it comes to us from the other hemisphere, that would be the one down there, which is now experiencing summer. Well, not quite summer, is it? It won't be well, summer until for December 27th. Summer, 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 sorry. Summer uh, now. Summer now. And, uh, um, and that is in New Zealand, which, hey, that's pretty cool. I haven't seen the logo. I didn't dig that. So they had to go through this whole thing, didn't they, in New Zealand, about developing the new picture of the, the, the skeletal branch thing. I love the rock. I, think that's right. I like the laser kiwi myself. The laser kiwi was much funnier, but there you go. Oh, burn! <laughs> so, um, is, are you going to do your own presentation, or is Dave doing it? Um, uh, Dave, Dave will page through the slides. No, Dave will page through the slides. Okay. So, I would like to thank both Mr. Gallagher, who is wearing obviously his kiwi lay. <laughs> For doing the technical portion, and uh, and up on the screen you can see the man who everybody's jealous of because he kept fondling Orlando Bloom's um, ears <laughs> and, and designed all those hobbit toes and things like that. And that's Norman Kate uh, from New Zealand. And it's um, I'd just like to quickly turn around uh, to show you Smothcon South. This is us uh, doing our, 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 our <laughs> getting lots of people together to talk about uh, New Zealand Bopon. Anyway, let's get straight into it. Uh, Dave, can you move on to the next slide, please? Um, just wanted to very briefly go through um, some information about New Zealand. This is a slide of world flight times, just so you have some idea. Um, obviously, this is something you can get off uh, various websites, but we thought this graphic was quite appropriate. Because um, we know that, of course, it's a long way to come, we appreciate that, and we'd certainly appreciate that uh, coming to New Zealand is an effort, and we would want to avoid Not even vaguely. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I said not even vaguely. <laughs> Says the man for the people. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, next slide, please, Dave. Uh, uh, as you know, it's about location. Uh, Yes, thank you. So Auckland uh, is one of our possible ones. It is, it is honestly falling down the list because of cost. Uh, if you keep going, Dave, that'd be great. Just uh, page through to the end. Um, so you can see that uh, there is a cost associated with it. There's a full-on convention center that would take uh, many thousands of people. Um, and this is an example of the Auckland CBD uh, with the dots in red marked where our potential venues would be, and green dots are hotel and accommodation and some of uh, possible other venues. Uh, so this is a, hotels and accommodation are within uh, re pretty close walking distance. There's certainly at least a thousand, in Auckland certainly at least a thousand rooms within a 10 minute walk. Um, yes. Thank you. Yeah, so Wellington is probably our prime venue at this point. Um, you may have heard on the news in the last few weeks, uh, there definitely was a large earthquake in Wellington, oh, sorry, in South Ireland. Um, despite what the news may be pointing out to you, New Zealand has not slid into the sea. <laughs> and, and this is something that um, we actually are prepared for uh, in seriousness. Uh, there was an event at the Michael Fallon Centre, which is one of our main venues. At the time, some aftershocks happened, and they had people through able to check it and delay could it, uh, delay the event by only half an hour. So, and this is not to say, you know, I don't wish to put fear into anyone, but this is not something that is um, people running around, you know, with their um, hair on fire. Sorry, maybe a few, but uh, <laughs> possibly for legitimate reasons. Um, the main. Wellington is, is kind of our preferred venue for cultural reasons. It's, it's a very lovely city, as I'm somewhat biased, but it is actually gorgeous. Um, it is also a lot cheaper than Auckland. The main issue at the moment is that uh, the convention center that we want to use has not been built yet. 
Um, we, we completely know that this is a stumbling block, uh, and we, we have been assured millions of times by everyone concerned, as you might expect, that it will certainly be built uh, well in time for 2020. Thank uh, you. Uh, but, Norman, I have yeah. to stop you I'm sorry. now. Because you hit your three minutes. Actually, you hit your three minutes about 15 seconds. No, no. That's, that's absolutely fine, because I think the next one, the next slide is Dave. It's Dave. Right, yeah. so there's Dave, and then down to the next, not last one. Okay, never mind. Click all the way through to the end, because they're ready to be inquisitive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very all much. That, uh, most of that information is available on our website. So, um, we have some questions that were specifically for New Zealand, and of course, the first one is, which of your proposed facilities fell down in the earthquake, <laughs> and are there any plans to repair them? <laughs> Gladly, none. Um, there, there is a parking building next to one of our cinemas, which could maybe have been used, but has been condemned, but will come down in time, um, but no. There is nothing that's fallen out. In fact, Papa, which is one of our potential facilities in Wellington, is one of the most earthquake-proof buildings in the country. Uh, probably second only to Parliament. Uh, and certainly <laughs> the new convention centre would be built to entirely earthquake, you know, obviously would be built to um, the proper earthquake codes. Does that answer the question? Sure. We, can, we can add a few more. Um, given, that, given that the fandom has you know, been badly burned in the past by um, bids, essentially pitching holes in the ground, or even in this case, potential holes in the ground. Um, what are your backup plans? How easy are they to execute? And you know, how quick, at what point would you actually trigger those for, for facilities? Yeah. The, um, one, of the, one of the very interesting things about Wellington, so okay, let me just say, Wellington is our favorite site. One of the interesting things about Wellington when we were looking was the amount of um, smaller facilities that are available uh, that, for instance, if we needed to expand space, we could, but if the convention center did not exist, we can use those spaces to do uh, largely the equivalent. I'm not going to say the same because it would be uh, a little bit, it would be more uh, traveling between venues than, than it would be now. But, but um, Tapapa has about another, how many, how many rooms? They have another two, three, four, five. Right. So, so Tapapa have almost enough, or pretty much enough to do it anyway. It's just that Tapapa will be more expensive for us to do. So that's not our primary primary choice. How large a convention would you be anticipating? Um, we're running our, our, uh, our most likely number is 2,000. Uh, that is based on lots of comp. Did four. you say 2,000? I'm sorry. Or 1,000? Uh, sorry, 2,000 people. Thank you. That, I, I just couldn't hear you. That's all. Yeah, 2,000 people. Uh, uh, sorry, 2,000 warm bodies, I should say, on the ground. It's about uh, 2,000 people. I don't understand how you do this. Some of them may be dead. And, but with, uh, the, the facilities that we have could easily extend to three, could extend to 3,000, uh, given the usual attendance of events. If we tried to get all 3,000 people into, say, the Hugo's, that would not be possible because the auditorium would not be large enough. Uh, but given traditional attendance of around about half membership, it would simply not be a problem. So just a, a quick follow-up to the, the last one. Yeah, the, yes. Is the contract with your you know, backup facilities, is that actually back-to-back -back by your Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Convention Centre itself, or is that something that you would be required to go out and do yourselves? It would, it would need to be, the, the Tapapa, Tapapa side of it could be made as part of the whole, the whole contracting, but the other <coughs> venues are not part of the Positively Wellington Venues group, as it were. Uh, so they would need to be done so. Um, how many current members of your bid have served as division heads or above at a Worldcon which has already taken place? Um, two. Currently, two that are officially officially on the bid. Um, we would naturally be, be looking more. I, actually, sorry, I've served as, as a deputy division head um, in a couple of levels. Uh, but 
I will completely cop to the fact that at the moment we are not high on we are not high on um, that level of experience, but we are eager to learn. Um, there's a question here about weather, which I sneer at as a Bostonian, but there you go. <laughs> August, uh, August weather for Wellington. Well, we won't have snow. I know. Well, yeah, that's why I'm sneering. August weather for Wellington is an average low of 43 and an average high of 53. I think that sounds great. <laughs> August is the rainiest month of the year with rain most days. Auckland is similar but a bit warmer. So cool and cloudy with lots of rain pretty much everywhere. How does this square with outdoor touristing that is New Zealand's greatest attraction? Bring a raincoat. <laughs> Good for you. It is unfortunately a fact. Um, at the time, um, we we simply because New Zealand is, is pretty much an, uh, an isthmus. The whole thing is basically an isthmus. Uh, weather is extremely variable. Uh, we've certainly had periods of weather in Wellington that are sunny and or cloudy with no rain during the periods of time. But you know what? I'm not going to promise anything. One of our contingency plans is to try and deal with you know how how do we deal with if it's raining. Uh, because there will be outside travel in, in, in Wellington. Um, this is certainly a, um, a, a thing that we are very conscious of. Um, and absolutely, there could be, um, the, the, there could be rain in the tourism. And I, my twee answer is, but fairly accurate, is bring layers. Layers are great. And a decent lightweight raincoat will, go, will do wonders towards protecting me. Um, yeah, I wish I could promise you good weather. Most fans don't melt in the rain, even if they think they're low. Oh, I'm sorry? I said most fans don't melt in the rain, really. What's your hotel pricing situation, and particularly um, what's its attitude to corkage, forkage, room party type situations? Um, obviously, pricing has not been settled yet, uh, but ballpark, uh, as far as I've been able to tell during, during uh, conversion rates and so on, it's Certainly for Lyco, we have a, the closest hotel to the, almost the closest hotel to our main facilities is a four and a half star, and it would have similar rates, if not lower. So I, so about, so, so, so the, the four and a half star would be about 180 US, um, and there's a three star in a similar, similar distance from there. Uh, and then there's any number of backpackers uh, and so on nearby. So, and, and there's the apartment hotels, and they all have this a wide range of prices. Uh, we, we, when I've been looking at prices and comparing them to the, to the US, I feel that, and, and some, some of the back of the envelope cafes I've done is that the prices are quite similar for the same kind of hotels. Um, we do include uh, all our taxes and so on in our, in our hotel prices when, um, when they're published on websites. Um, Is that the thought? Uh, no, the other one was around um, forkage, corkage, and Thank you. Uh, room parties. Yes, um, we do not have information on that yet. Uh, the odds are that based on based on ha how we're looking, the odds are that things like parties will, will be done um, in one of the main convention convention spaces rather than as room parties. Partly that is due to uh, rooms in. in there's not that many rooms in New Zealand that would support the kind of parties that are expected. Um, in our main hotel, are potentially some big suites that would be suitable for some of these parties, but that is would be under negotiation. Okay. Um, so the, there are a couple of other questions that people have forwarded to us. Um, and I'm trying. What, what do you think the, the biggest potential hurdle that a uh, New Zealand Worldcon would face would be? Um, the, the one that is the praise biggest on my mind is um, experience. We, we know that, you know, I, I don't believe that we've made any attempt to wool over anyone's eyes about that. Um, <laughs> we do have the wool, however. <laughs> Um, but we we're definitely in the um, 
in the running to educate ourselves and also to work with people who want to work with us. Um, we're, we're simply not sitting here and there's no way that we're ever going to say this will be only run by New Zealanders. It cannot be. Um, you, I mean, you know in the US, how, you know, running a world con is a continental US task. Um, I, I hope that over the last few years we've shown that we are willing to turn up and learn um, and we're really, and we will be tapping people on the shoulders and we're really hoping to work with many, many of uh, people in the US, UK, or over Europe. Um, behind that is the possibility of a conference that are not being built. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be kind of a problem. That would be bad. That would be bad. Be bad. <laughs> so, we can uh, completely concede that way. That would be bad. <laughs> I, I am afraid that I'm one of those people who doesn't know nearly enough about your country, but I have a question. How how likely is New Zealand to kill you? Is it going to be in the same creative ways that Australia would kill somebody? <laughs> <laughs> or are they different in really unusual way, way less creative than Australia when it comes to ways to kill you. Uh, now, it's, it would be kind of the wrong time of year for it, probably, but you could try bungee jumping. Uh, <laughs> the, the shot over jet uh, is a great way of getting hypothermia, especially in winter. Um, you'd have to go digging pretty hard to find anything that would even bite you in New Zealand. Uh, orcs, orcs may be more of a problem. Than <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Did you say orcs or ox? Orcs. They do have parrots that organize I think orcs are unlikely. I'm not sure whether they can live here or not. No, no. Oh, sorry. The, the orcs are from Auckland. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so, at least from a life, uh, from a um, uh, a livestock point of view, um, New Zealand is considered very safe. Um, from a but also from a people point of view, it is generally considered um, quite safe. You know, we don't have enormous amounts of crime. There is some, um, as you might have in any part of the world. So, uh, uh, if, if it gives you any any idea, our police typically don't carry guns. Um, it did. So uh, uh, that probably answers a bit more than the question you asked, but yeah. That's all right. Um, transit into Wellington, should you go with that as a facility, um, what's yeah. the transfer like? What's the, um, what's the frequency of flights down to Wellington from Auckland? Um, flights into Auckland are very frequent, and then the, then the connecting, it would need to be connecting, sorry, I should say Auckland is our, Auckland or Christchurch, I should say, are our main um, international hubs. Uh, you would likely fly into Auckland, uh, and then the flight to Wellington from that point is about an hour. Um, security, security in New Zealand is not lax, but it's definitely a more relaxed, shall we say. Great. So, in other words, even if you got into Auckland, with only a one hour connection time between your international and your um, uh, and your ongoing domestic flight, um, I don't believe that you would have any problems making that. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. That's <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, Stephen, well, I, you I, and Stephen I, can do better right. on that one later. It's not great, but <laughs> thank that, you very much. Kind of We're out of time. You know, but So, yeah, and, and, and the thing is, there's a lot of there's a lot of people away from the end, uh, and you can actually fly directly to Wellington from Australia, and I believe they've added some destinations from Asia Pacific as well. Norman? Yes. I love you, but shut up. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much.